Hey, welcome back! Today we're going to talk a little bit more about writing, and I'm going to answer a question that I often get asked by my students, and that is how to use personal pronouns in writing. And I get asked this question in several different ways. Sometimes my students say vague things like, can we use pronouns in this essay? And the answer is always, of course, it's, it's pretty much impossible to speak without using pronouns. But I know what they mean is personal pronouns, and not just any personal pronouns, but particularly first and second person pronouns. The reason I get asked this question is that they've been told often that they're not allowed to use first person pronouns or second person pronouns in their writing. Now why would that be? What's wrong with using first or second person? Why are third person pronouns okay? And so in order to discuss ways to improve your writing with personal pronouns, I need to discuss first of all, what are the personal pronouns and what is the effect that they have? And second of all, what kind of writing are we talking about? Of all the pronouns that we use, personal pronouns are hands down the most frequent. They're called personal pronouns because they recognize which person we're talking about. The first person pronouns are my own pronouns, the pronouns that I am using to talk about myself. They include I, me, my, and mine. They also include if I am with a group, we, us, our, and ours. The reason we have multiple pronouns for the same person is that we use them to recognize whether we are the subject of the sentence, the object of the sentence, or a possessive adjective. Now, in our modern English, we don't distinguish between singular and plural second person. We simply use you. We used to have a singular, it was the thou, thee, thy singular. However, now we just use you, and we use it for both the subject and the object. For possessive, we use your, yours. So I am the first person, the person I am talking directly to is the second person, and the person that we're talking about is the third person. He, him, his for masculine, she, her, hers for feminine, it, its for a neutral object, or they, them, their, theirs for plural. Now, I'm not going to get much deeper into the grammar of this right now, but notice that in first person, I'm talking about myself. In second person, I'm talking directly to someone. But the third person pronouns are the pronouns we use to describe things out of our current conversation. Whenever we use pronouns for a person or object, we're going to use third person. Those are absolutely necessary to everything we're saying. However, when I shift from third person to first and second person, I'm no longer talking about something, and I'm spending more time talking about the conversation itself. We'll come back to this idea in just a moment. The second question we have to talk about is, what kind of writing are we discussing? If we're talking about informal writing, casual creative writing, or a specific style like letter writing, or memoir, first and second person may be appropriate. After all, if I'm writing a letter to my grandmother, I would say you quite frequently in the letter, because I'm addressing her specifically. If I'm writing a story about my childhood, I would use I frequently, because it's a personal story about me, the narrator. Therefore, first and second person would be very appropriate in those cases. But usually that's not what my students are talking about when they ask if they can use personal pronouns in their writing. They're talking about formal academic writing. So let's focus in on formal academic writing and what the effect of different types of personal pronouns is on this style of writing. First of all, as I already mentioned, third person pronouns are absolutely necessary, and there's nothing informal about them. You should definitely always use them. But let's look at second person. When we use the second person pronouns in our writing, you, your, yours, what happens to our writing is that it drops in its formality considerably. It becomes chatty, conversational. There are times when you want your writing to sound conversational, but formal academic writing is not one of them. You should generally always avoid second person in your formal writing. It is informal and weak writing. So what should you use instead? Generally, when someone uses second person in their formal writing, what they intend to convey is what a general person would do in a situation. So maybe I'm writing about a student who uh, is struggling, and I'm trying to convince my audience that they should develop better study habits. And so in my essay I say something like, you should spend at least 20 minutes a day studying vocabulary. Well, the you there is not 
talking to one specific person, but the general student who needs my argument. What could I replace that with? Well, there are a couple of options. Well, one would be to replace it with a general noun that represents the kind of person I'm talking about. It's possible even to use something like person. A person should study vocabulary for 20 minutes a day. Or maybe a student should study vocabulary for 20 minutes a day. Person and student replace the very informal second person pronoun, and the meaning is clear. The only problem with this approach is that sometimes you have to use other pronouns to represent person or student or whatever other noun you've used, and you deal with gender issues. I'm talking about a generic student, and so sometimes the pronouns become a little difficult. Let me give an example. In the second person, I could say, you should do your homework. But if I want to replace that second person pronoun and make it more formal, I could say, a student does... Now, should I say his homework? Well, before the 1960s, that was the standard way to do it. And in some languages, it still is. However, in the 1960s, more and more people began to complain about the gender bias in that approach. And so we went down a path that became more and more confusing. Should I say a student studies his or her homework? And that's acceptable, but if used excessively, can be confusing and wordy. I definitely should not say a student does their homework, although that's tempting. Because I've gone from singular, student, to plural, their. That is incorrect, and definitely should be avoided, even though it is more acceptable in casual speaking nowadays. One fix is to avoid using singular nouns. I could say students do their homework, and then students is plural, and their is plural, and I'm okay. It's important to have agreement in number. If this is plural, this also has to be plural. Otherwise, we lead to confusion rather than sense. Another option is to use the pronoun one. One must do one's homework. It is acceptable, but it can sound very stiff and formal. And if used in excess, you can definitely sound kind of pretentious. Ooh, one can do one's homework, can't one? Pinky. So, as you're removing those second-person pronouns, be careful. Finally, what about first-person pronouns? Should I say I, me, my in my paper? The answer is, in formal writing, generally, no. Generally, you should avoid using first-person. However, that isn't a hard and fast rule, and it to some extent depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The exception to that rule would be if you are using yourself as an example, as evidence in your paper. But even then, it lowers the formality a little. So if you are speaking from personal experience to defend a certain topic, using first person might be acceptable. It's essential that you pay close attention to the purpose of your essay, the audience of your essay, and then make a judgment whether it's appropriate to use first person. However, the way many students use first person in their writing, especially as they are just beginning their writing skills, is to use first person to make a claim or to discuss their writing process. This use of first person should always be avoided. So you should never say something like, I think, or I believe, or in my paper, I am going to explain to you or I am going to attempt to explore, or any sort of statement about how you are writing the paper. Don't talk about yourself writing the paper. Why not? Well, because it's sort of like taking someone to a ball game, and instead of letting them watch the ball game, you stand in front of them and shout and wave your arms, Look at how I'm taking you to the ball game! It turns all the attention on you rather than on your topic. And your focus should be on your topic. And if you're the one writing the essay, your reader knows that these are your thoughts, your opinions, your ideas. You don't have to tell them that. I think Pearl is the most important character in the Scarlet Letter. Don't say that, just say Pearl is the most important character in the Scarlet Letter. We know it's your opinion, your name's at the top of the paper. These I statements are generally fairly easy to remove, you just cross them out. Instead of saying, I believe Hamlet's madness stems from his desire to be accepted by his father. Just say, Hamlet's madness stems from his desire to be accepted by his father. All I had to do was chop off that beginning, and the statement is just fine. If you say, in my essay, 
I am going to explain how the ancient mariner changes the life of the wedding guest. You can just cross out the first part and say, the ancient mariner changes the life of the wedding guest. Or maybe combine it with the next sentence if that's not enough. So to recap, personal pronouns are used all the time to talk about people and things. They're very helpful, but in our formal writing, we should generally only stick to third person personal pronouns. Always avoiding second person, and generally avoiding first person as well. In so doing, we'll keep from distracting our reader from our topic, and we'll keep the appropriate tone and formality of our essay. Thanks for watching. You can click to subscribe or to watch another video, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.